I have five grams of europium metal that I picked up on eBay, along with one gram of terbium metal. Now, since these are from eBay, these aren't eligible for my element collection in the usual sense. So what I'm going to be doing with these is converting them to oxides and doing an experiment with pottery to see if I can make blacklight reactive glazes. So, two test tubes, one for the terbium, one for the europium. I'm going to start by putting some water in each one. Just a little bit. To this one I'm going to add the terbium metal. And into this one, I'm going to put a piece of the europium metal. I'm actually going to break some of this off if I can. There we go. So I have one gram of terbium and five grams of europium. Whoa! Hi there! So the europium is reacting directly with the water and I didn't have to add an acid to it. There's still a chunk of terbium in there. Mm. Completely undissolved. What's floating around in here is terbium sulfate that there was just too much of it to dissolve it in the water. Okay, now what are you going to suspend it in? Well, once I get all of the uh, terbium sulfate to dissolve and think about putting uh, the rest of the terbium metal chunk at the bottom into solution, then I'm going to precipitate it out as terbium carbonate and then roast that to make terbium oxide and then paint that on pottery. This over here was a solid chunk of metal uh, just two days ago, and it's already turned into this crunchy yellow, technically it's the carbonate, not the oxide, because it's reacting with both the oxygen in the air and the CO2, and the moisture in the air is probably playing a role as well. And some of this actually flakes off pretty easily. Some of it doesn't. The carbonate is also weakly fluorescent. One of the neat things about many metal carbonates is that simple application of heat can often convince them to give up their CO2, converting them into the metal oxide. So I'm going to demonstrate that with this europium carbonate. After just a couple of seconds in the flame, you should see that the bright yellow europium carbonate has turned into bright white europium oxide. As it cools down, it'll also become greatly more fluorescent. Okay, I've put a UV blocking filter, which is actually just a pair of laser safety goggles in front of the phone. Now I can shine the UV light on the europium oxide. 
And instead of swamping out the camera with the ultraviolet being scattered back, now you can see the raw fluorescence of the europium oxide. In here I have terbium carbonate mixed with water to make a thin slurry. And this is one of the uh, test pieces. So what I'm going to do is just paint a thin layer of this slurry onto the test piece and then overglaze it with some standard clear glaze. I think what I'll do to uh, really test how this stuff works is do the top in zinc free clear and the bottom in uh, standard clear that contains zinc just to see what happens. Now, for some reason, terbium carbonate doesn't actually glow under ultraviolet light the way terbium sulfate does. I'm hoping in the interaction with the glaze that it does produce something fluorescent. Okay, I've got the UV filter on the phone. Let's see if the camera picks it up now. All these glittery little flecks of neon green fluorescence. Once the terbium carbonate was applied to the ceramic piece, it's starting to fluoresce. I'm really optimistic about this now. So, on to the glaze. When I started editing the video together, I realized I didn't actually have any video or images of the europium mushroom. So I painted another mushroom with europium. Just for the purpose of the video. So that's what a mushroom coated in europium oxide looks like with some ultraviolet light. The two test mushrooms with the terbium and europium carbonates, or terbium carbonate and europium oxide, and a test goblet that has an assortment of lanthanide oxides on it. Uh, there's some terbium, some europium, neodymium, praseodymium, lanthanum, and cerium. And these will all be going into uh, TBA Ceramics next high fire. So I'll give you an update uh, after these come out of the kiln. See you next time.